I felt to hike the trail. A wealth of memories could have been lost before they had even occurred if I had dismissed as a whim my inkling to hike. It is disturbing how tenuous our potential is due to our fervent defense of the comfortable norm. As a result of my hike, I am much more inclined to do things. I will have fewer should-have-dones, even if it means incurring some wish-I-hadn'ts. I have changed in smaller ways, too. I am friendlier and more patient. I worry less about money. I can get by with less. It is as pleasing to get rid of old stuff as it is to get new stuff. Excess is a burden, even when you are not carrying it on your back. And in a way, I do feel proud. I feel proud of the positive influence I've had on my circle of friends. One friend took a month's leave from her job to sail as crew member on a replica of Columbus's ship, Nina. She told me, it, your hike, made me feel like it was okay, like I was getting permission to go. I had the impression that things like this are irresponsible. But then, when I saw someone like you, who is responsible, do it, I felt okay. It is not unreasonable or selfish, it is healthy. When she asked her boss for a leave, he said he had read about a guy who would quit his job to hike the AT. Her boss thought it would be a great adventure for her, and that she wouldn't have to quit her job to go. Another woman took up long morning walks, and got more fit than she had been in years. Yet another friend ran a half marathon. He said, I inspired him to pursue an extraordinary personal quest. Now I am more comfortable talking with people about my experience. When they say, I would love to do something like that. I know how to respond. You can. Afterward. Since writing AWOL on the Appalachian Turn Trail, left. I've received a number of messages from readers who tell me that they've been inspired to hike the AT. Clearly, these readers have not paid attention to what I've written. The book is replete with tales of misery, sprained ankle, lost toenails, blisters, and a longer list of minor inconveniences. I've often thought that if I could change anything about the book, it would be to present a more upbeat perspective on the hike. Continue this on route. Edition of the A Wall on the Appalachian Trail, I had the opportunity to change it, but I have not. Instead, I've chosen to believe that readers, far from being inattentive, do perceive the underpresented truth that hiking the AT was an overwhelmingly positive experience. For readers who are not to be deterred, here are the questions that I've most often been asked What gear did you use? A complete list of my gear is on the website www.awallonthetrail.com. The list should be considered notional because new and better choices are now available, although I still hike some every year and take essentially the same gear. At the time of my through hike, having a cell phone on the trail was anathema. I carried one at the start of my hike, hardly got any use from it, and sent it home after a few weeks. Cell phones are becoming standard gear because reception is increasing, and pay phones are dwindling. Smartphones have become multi-purpose tools.